What's up everyone? Today we're going to be going over Fenwick Tree and then we're going to be going over Leak Code 307. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than my usual ones because I'm going to actually explain the data structure, uh, how to derive it and draw the diagram and then I'll use that to uh, solve 307. So before, don't just ignore, just ignore this, ignore this. So before we even talk about a Fenwick Tree, let's look at an array and two very common uh, operations we do on the array. Uh, let's take this guy for example. So two very common operations we do is we, uh, we wanna find out the sum between the, the beginning and some index there, right? <clears throat> so from zero, one, two, three, four, so whatever index we say, we say we want int sum, and we give it um, an x like that, like a, a index x, and then we say int result, and we say for int i, i is less than x, i plus plus, res is incremented by, let's say this array was ar, it's incremented by ar, and then we return result. So that's uh, one, one commonly used thing. And then another commonly used um, uh, operation on an array is uh, increment. So int i, or int x rather, and int val. So someone, this is nine, if someone wanted to increment this by 10, they could just say ar of x is incremented by val. Oh, this is void actually, this is void. <clears throat> so, okay, so before even a Fenwick tree, before we even talk about that, here's an array, and two common things we do is we find the sum between the beginning and some index i, and we increment whatever value, what, uh, whatever uh, value in a given index x by the argument val. <clears throat> So the runtime for this is O of n, and the runtime for this is O of 1, which is not really bad. However, if we want to constantly get the sum, and also we are going to constantly increment it, and the array is not going to be static, then we probably want to do better than O of n and O of, o of 1. So that's where. Uh, Fenwick tree comes in. We're going to improve the sum uh, time complexity by giving up a little bit of the increment time complexity. So, uh, regular array, and we have a Fenwick tree array. So, sum is going to be O of n uh, increment is going to be O of 1, and this thing is going to be O of log of n. That's the improvement, and this is log of n. <clears throat> That's the trade-off. Now, cool. So I already explained why we want to do this. If the array is really long, um, if there's constantly changes being made to the array and we're still trying to query the sum, that's when we'd use a Fenwick tree. Now, the cool thing about a Fenwick tree array is that it doesn't use any additional space apart from the Fenwick tree array itself. And even though it's called a Fenwick tree, the data structure is actually an array. It's just our logical representation of it in our mind is kind of shaped like a tree. And cool. So the question is, how do we go from O of n to log of n? Now, before I even draw the diagram of the tree, I'm going to show you um, how, that, how that happens, how, how we're getting log of n. So once again, let's take our helper, our, our array. We are getting extra by doing this. So first, we group them everything together in groups of two. This negative six, this is um, 24, this is six, this is 10. This is gonna be 18, and this is gonna be 16. And this is going to be 34. So we're pretty much pairing them together. In our original code, if we needed 
the sum from the beginning to here, we'd have to add this, 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 and that would be O of n. But in the Fenwick tree, uh, if we want the sum till here, all we have to do is add this guy and this guy, which is 18 plus 4 is 22. Um, if we add this from, from here to here, oh, sorry, from here to here, let's see what happens. 1 plus negative 7, negative 6 plus 15, 9. 9 plus 9, 18. 18 plus 4 is 22. 22 plus 2 is 24. So 24, and we're getting this. This is how we're able to go from O of n time into log of n time. Um, cool. Uh, this is just to help us gain the intuition. The actual Fenwick tree is like a vertical. It's not, it's not put together like this. <clears throat> But now you can see how we're able to improve the sum time complexity so much. Now, let's erase that. So now, if, when someone gives us a regular array, let's figure out how we can get a Fenwick tree array from that. Now, when Fenwick introduced this, uh, the trick he used was first by making the Fenwick tree uh, indexed by one. So we do that by whatever length of array we get, we make our Fenwick tree one thing bigger. So if there's uh, eight, there's going to be nine. So there's a total of nine spots, right? Nine blocks. Uh, so n nine blocks are going to be represented by four bits. It's going to be represented by four bits. Now. A, I've seen different implementations of how to initialize Fenwick tree. Uh, a lot, a lot of them you might have seen might be in n log n, but the way I'm going to show you is initialization in O of n time. So we have to use four bits to represent nine blocks because we can't use three. Now, in a Fenwick tree, the first one, the first node is always going to be a dummy node, right? So this guy. And we're using four bits. This block is going to be this block. Now, that's the first level. Now we're going to have level one. On level one, we can only use one bit. On level one, it's going to be, we're going to get uh, one. It's going to be represented by uh, zero, 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 0001. Now, we have two here. Zero zero one zero. Then we have four zero one zero zero. Then we have eight, and this is um, zero one zero zero. All right. So on the first level, all our blocks are only um, consisting of numbers which use a singular bit. <clears throat> Now, cool. So this zero is this block, this block is this block, this block is this block, this four is this block, this one is this block. Now we have zero, one, two. Uh, there's no number between one and two, right? Okay. Now we do two and four. Is there a number between two and four? Yeah. We have three. So we need two bits to represent the number three. So that's going to be in our level two. Well, we, this guy comes here, 3, and 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, no, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 0, yeah, adding 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now between 4 and 8, do we have numbers? Yeah, we have 5, 6, 7. <clears throat> we can represent 5 and 6 using 2 bits, so they're going to be in level 2. 5. This is uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 0, 1, 1, 0. It's going to be 6. Now we still have 7. We need 3 bits to represent 7. So that's going to go on level 3. Cool. Now we pretty much built the skeleton of our Fenwick tree. This is just initialized. <clears throat> and our tree diagram is a logical representation of which blocks are connected with which blocks. So 
this zero is this, one is one, two is two, three is three, four is four, five is five, six is six, seven is seven, eight is eight. <clears throat> the parent of eight is zero. The parent of seven is six. The parent of six is four. The parent of four is zero. The parent of three is two. The parent of two is zero. The parent of one is zero. The parent of one is zero. Now you might be wondering, why is that? Now, the very core trick behind the Fenwick tree is that <clears throat> to go from a number to its parent, you have to remove the rightmost one. In other words, the rightmost set bit. So to go from seven to six, you just take away this one. To go from three to two, you just take away this one. The little code for that is this parent equal to i minus i and negative i. Let's do that. Let's do that for 7. We have to apply, if i is 7, we have to get the parent, which is 6. So 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1. Negative i or negative 7 in 2's complement is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. So what do we do with these? We're going to do an and on them, right? So this is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this part breaks down to 1. And then initially, i is going to be 7. So 7 minus 1 is 6. And that's how we get there. You can feel free to try it for whichever block you want. But that's the trick for to go from a node to its parent. So that's why the parent of 7 is 6 and the parent of 6 is, is 4. It's because we can go from this number to this by taking away the rightmost set bit. <clears throat> now hold that thought for a second. Let's begin building our tree. Now um, before we get our final Fenwick tree, there's going to be one intermediate step which is very self-explanatory, is we need to cumulatively sum everything that's in here and put it in the Fenwick tree. So this is 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus uh, negative 7, negative 6, um, negative 6 plus 15, 9, 9 plus 9, 18, these two 22, this is 24, this is 24, and this is 34. Cool. But this is not our final Fenwick tree. This is just the intermediate step. Uh, remember I told you this block is these blocks are representative of this, so let me fill that in. Negative 2 is negative 6, 3 is 9, 4 is 18, 5 is 22, this is 24, this is 24, this is 24. Cool. So right now our Fenwick tree holds a cumulative sum of um, all the integers incrementing upwards, but this is not our final. To make it final, we do one little thing. We take, we take a node and we take away the value of its parent from that node. So what I mean is, from 34, we subtract 0. From 24, we subtract 24. From 24, we subtract 18. From 22, we subtract 18. From 9, we subtract negative 6. And from 1, we subtract 0. Now, we can do that easily because of that little trick I showed you earlier with the parent. Cool. So, so um, let's let's fill that out. So to go from um, mm, here to here, all we have to do is remove the rightmost set bit. So we remove that. Now, now let's remove the values. So twenty-four minus twenty-four is going to be zero. It's going to be six. It's going to be four. 18 minus 0 is 18. 9 minus negative 6 is 15. And this is going to stay as, as it is. Now, why did we do that? We did that for two reasons. <clears throat> One, we can, given a node, we can easily access its parent by removing the rightmost set bit, which I already explained. And two, if you notice something, to get, let's say, from, mm, from, here to here, right? What's the sum going to be? Right now we have 24, right? We didn't, we didn't, we updated this. This is our final Fenwick tree, but we have to make 
this one match this. But let's just take it for here. From here to here is going to be 24. So what is, um, what is this number? It's going to be uh, a 6, right? So when we're trying to go from here to here, now keep in mind our Fenwick tree is indexed by 1. So if we want the value from 1 to 6, oh, sorry, from 0 to 6, we have to tell our Fenwick tree 7 because everything is incremented by 1. So when we want this, you go to 7 and we go up the tree. 7 plus 6 plus 18 plus 0, oh, sorry, 0 plus 6 plus 18 plus 0 is 24. And that's what this number is. Cool. So now um, you, we can we can uh, update our array with the values in our tree. So 0, 0, 1 is 1. This negative 6 is going to be um, 15. Here is 15. 4 is 18. 5 is 4. 6 is 6. 7 is 0. <coughs> Cool, so this is our final Fenwick tree. And this is what our final Fenwick tree looks like. And this is the integer array uh, in the code, what it's gonna be filled with. <clears throat> the code for this is gonna go in here, but hold on for that a second. Now, now that we have our um, Fenwick tree integer built out, oh, integer array built out. The two uh, main functions from before, remember, is a sum and increment. We can start implementing those. <clears throat> so first, let's write the code to actually figure out how this, figure out how to make this one. So let me see. Um, did I cover that? Did I cover? Okay, I updated that one. The things at the top, we have these like that and yeah let's get into the code of actually writing the Fenwick array so we can initialize our so let's say int n is the length of the array and then our Fenwick tree is going to be new int n plus 1 Right, it's one larger. Fenwick. What we're going to do is Fenwick of one is going to be a r of zero, and then for int i is equal to one, i is less than n, i plus plus. F w i plus one is going to be f w i plus a r of i. And that's the intermediate step. Remember, we did the cumulative functions up, the cumulative sum up. So that's the intermediate step. Now, we're going to do the part where we remove the value of the parent node from the uh, given node. So that is going to look like this. For int i is equal to n, i is greater than 0, i minus minus parent is going to be i minus i and the negative i. So given a set, if i is 7 or i is 8, all right, the parent is going to be um, the corresponding thing. So for the parent of 7, if you recall, it was a 6, the parent of 8 is 0. So if the parent is greater than or equal to 0, then the Fenwick i is decremented by the Fenwick parent value. And then that's it. That's how we initialize a Fenwick tree array in O of n time. It's pretty simple. So that was it. That's the hard part. Now we can do the easy part. So I'll just take a look at that. Uh, 
Um, cool, cool. So now let me remind you why we even started using Fenway tree in the first place. It's because of the two functions, sum and increment on the just a regular integer array. Now I'm gonna draw them, I'm gonna write them out side by side so you can see how it's done with a integer array and how it's done with a Fenwick tree array. So um, regular array for sum, for sum, it's a, uh, oh, oh, n time, right? So it's just gonna be int sum int x, I know I wrote this before, but this is just to help reconnect to what we've learned. Mm -hmm. Which result is zero, and um, result is incremented by a r of i, and we return result. So this is done in O of n time, but with the Fenwick. This is done in O log n. So it's going to be the same method signature. However, we're not using the AR array. We're going to use the FW array, Fenwick array. Now, um, OK, uh, yeah. So remember, Fenwick is incremented by 1. So we have to always add 1 before we start. Now, we're going to um, say x is greater than 0. This is because when we're adding, we're going to be, when we're summing, we're going to be going up the tree. So if I say 7, it's going to be 7, and then it's parent uh, 6, and then it's parent 4, and then it's parent 0. <coughs> so this one goes here, and then its parent goes here, and then its parent goes here. So um, so if, if we want the sum from here to here, right, we'll be doing, uh, we already counted that this is 24, so 0 plus 6 plus its parent, 18, which is 24, and its parent is 0. I guess, I guess maybe it might not go there because if we're writing it like that, but the point is the same thing. Well, x is greater than 0, what we do is result is incremented by Fenwick's x, and then how to turn this into its parent, uh, x is assigned to x minus x. Okay, so that's how we go from O of n to log of n. Now, for increment, we have void. Int i is going to be the index. Int or val is going to be the value. And this is done in O of n, but we're going to have a r of i and just incremented by a val. So that's using the a r array. If we're using the Fenwick array, void increment int i int val. Right. When we're Incrementing, we don't go, we go, we don't go from the bottom up of the tree. We go from the top down of the tree, and when we're summing, we're finding the parent. Uh, so when we're incrementing, what we're gonna do is find the next. Now, if you remember how we found the parent, we just do the opposite of that to find the next node. So it's gonna look like this. I is gonna be plus plus. I is always gonna be plus plus with Fenwick tree because we index by one while i is less than or equal to n. Um, Fenwick of i is incremented by val. And then i is going to become i plus i and negative i. 
So when we found the parent, we were doing i minus this, but when we do the next, we do i plus that. <clears throat> and the runtime for this is o of log n, and this is o of 1. That's the comparison between the two. Cool. So now we can use our um, increment function and our sum function from our Fenwick tree to answer this. Now let me go into 307. So the constructor is just the regular constructor. You can just, it'll be the same code as I wrote before. But for this, we're going to uh, have to use our helper method. So for, let's say, for example, um, what sum range means. So int i to int j means they want the sum between i and say like j inclusive. So if i is 1 and j is 4, they want us to return this plus this plus this plus this. Um, how can we get that? Well, we can use our sum function from our Fenwick tree and say uh, j minus sum of i minus 1. Uh, it's going to be i minus 1 because it's inclusive. So if, if they want this, what we're going to do is from uh, 0 to 4 and then uh, 0 to 0. So that's how we're going to get back 1 to 4 inclusive. <clears throat> uh, that was a summary. Now update is a, a little different than the increment of the Fenwick tree, at least in what the problem is describing. Update it's, it's called a point update, where it's like, if they have an array, a one, three, eight, and they call update on it, and they want to make this say 20, they're just going to pass in 2, because this is 0, 1, 2. This is going to be 20. And this is going to come out to be so how do we use our increment function from our Fenwick tree? It's very simple. It's just this um, void update int i int val is going to be first. When we get the difference between this and this is going to be sixteen, right? Uh, twelve. Sorry, twelve. So int diff is <clears throat> val minus a r of i and then all we have to do is just put um, a r of i as the val but we have one final step we change the initial a r array but we have to also update our Fenwick tree array and we do that by simply calling increment i and difference now the increment function already is going to take care of the uh, index by one plus plus, so that's already that's all we have to do. So that's pretty much how Fenwick tree works, and um, the leak code three zero seven is just going to use it. So if you like this video, please subscribe and like it, and let me know in the comments if you have any doubts or problems or something was unclear. Um, I'd like to elaborate on it and follow up. Uh, let me know. Uh, so thanks for watching.